was asked to me was uh, how I would, uh, oh, God is what? Who, who is God? What is God? Um, it's a 12 question is a big question. Um, the Jewish answer probably lies in the very famous verse, Shema Yisrael Adonai Elohim Adonai Echad, which is probably the Jewish version of the Declaration of, not independence, but the Declaration of Dependence, and where we uh, declare our dependency and recognize that God is our God and God is one. But what does that really mean? That means that we recognize God as a source of not just all existence, but a source of all reality. In life, we're all looking to tap into reality, to feel alive, and we feel alive when we tap into reality. But what is reality? Many people can give you different definitions of reality, but God is really the ultimate source of reality. And the greatest pleasure in life is to tap into that reality, to tap into the meaning of life that God provides for us. So the Declaration of Independence recognizes that God's values are our values, the ones we choose to emulate, um, are, are really what God's all about. It's, his, not just his existence, but his reality that we tap into and we find meaning in life, ultimately pleasure in life, and feeling alive. But I think the bigger question isn't what is God or who is God, but who are we? That's the bigger question. If we know who God is, then maybe we can know who we are. Because God created us in his image. So if we know what God is, then we can understand what we are as well. If God creates reality through his great vision of what the world should be and his values, presence in this world, then it's our role as human beings and certainly as Jewish people to bring that presence of God's reality into the world. And that is our role as a people, to bring his values and his presence in the world. And I'll uh, conclude with this story. Um, I'm here in the library, so I guess it reminds me of the story. There was a fellow in Africa who was doing some touring and he somehow met up with a rabbi and he made it very clear to the rabbi from day one that he did not believe in God. He was a full atheist in every sense of the word. You could even say he was a religious atheist. He totally fervently believed uh, that there was no God. And the rabbi, you know, let it go. And it wasn't really made part of the conversation. But the rabbi noticed as, as they were speaking, as we are today face to face, that this fellow was staring at the books behind the rabbi. And the rabbi had all these religious books behind him. And the fellow was like just totally staring at those books. And finally, the rabbi said to him, why are you staring at these books? If you're not really remotely interested in anything Jewish, or religious, certainly, and God, why are you staring at all these God and religious books? That's what I have in the house, these Hebrew books. And the fellow said, well, actually, I'm not staring at the books. And the rabbi said, of course you are. You're staring straight at the books. And the fellow said, I'm really not. So the rabbi said, well, what are you doing? He said, well, actually, I'm staring at the bookcase. So the rabbi said, you're staring at the bookcase. Why? What does that mean? So he said, Rabbi, let me tell you something. I am an expert in antique furniture. I recognize that bookcase. There are not more than five like it on this entire continent. And he began to describe the legs and the bottom of the, the furniture and the, the exquisite the stained furniture and the, and the detail that pointed to a particular individual who made this piece. And he was familiar with this person's piece. And so he's a brilliant person, master craftsman, who made this piece. And the rabbi said, you know, that's amazing. You could look at a bookcase and see who made the bookcase. He said, yes. He said, well, let me ask another question. Could you look at me and see who made me? And the fellow blanched, turned a little red, and then Rabbi said, you know what, maybe that wasn't a fair question, because maybe the fault doesn't lie with you, maybe the fault lies with me. If you can't see God's presence in me, then maybe I'm not doing the right things. I'm not doing well enough. If I'm here, if my role in this world is to bring God's values in this world, of his goodness, his kindness, and everything else that the Torah tells us about God's values through this mitzvah, if we're not able to project that, if the world doesn't see and sense God's presence through our actions, maybe the fault doesn't lie with them, maybe the fault lies with us. And that's the bigger question, not just who's God, but where's the God in us?